Hi there, Emmett Ryan from Ball in Europe here, and as you could probably tell from the title card and the name of this video, I've just been to see Air, the movie, went to the Stella in Rathmines, local cinema we have here. Very, very comfy seats with very, very expensive ticket prices, but these are the sacrifices we make for you, the viewer here on Ball in Europe. So I'm going to talk about Air over three general areas. One, the movie itself. Two, what we should really think about it in terms of sort of, I suppose, the commercial impact and all that. And three, just this broader trend we're seeing of stories of businesses as movies, which has really exploded, uh, movies and series, in the last few years. They've always existed, but not quite at this level. So let's begin with what you really want to know is, is the movie any good? Whoa, cutting in there for Emmett, who forgot to do this earlier. Uh, we really need to get those subs up to 1,000. If you haven't already, please do. Now back to what I was saying. So, mostly a yes, but there's a very, very important e eh in here. Uh, light spoilers, there's not really much to spoil it. I think most of you know that Nike is a very big business and happens to run the Air Jordan brand, so that's not actually a spoiler, but I suppose in terms of storytelling, we want to avoid spoilers where we can, but there's one key bit of storytelling, which is at the very start, which I think is relevant to explaining whether it's good or bad, and it's the one thing I really, really didn't like about the movie. So. At the very start, we get this montage to really establish there in 1984. We got the music for it. I won't say what it is, but it's a classic song of the era. We're getting classic images and footage from the era, tying it in with where things are. We're establishing that Nike is not a big deal in basketball, which is very important because here's the thing. I'm 42. I look like this. Now, obviously, I need a haircut, but look how great my hair is. No point in my lifetime, in terms of knowing what was going on, because I was three in 1984, would I have not considered Nike to be a huge company, particularly in basketball. Like, there's no point in my life there. So it's not just trying to convince young people that Nike wasn't a big deal it's trying to do. It's trying to convince a lot of people, the vast majority of people, that there was a time where genuinely Nike was an underdog. And we'll get back to the, how well it does in that in a second, but... There's a, re there's a real rush to that element of the story and a need to get there. So it's only the very, very start of the movie, but I didn't like it at all. There's this rush through basically everything from end of this montage to when Matt Damon and Ben Affleck's characters have their first meeting, which is still quite early in this movie, just feels we've got to get all this stuff in to try and establish stakes, to try and show people we're so wrong about things when we look into the future where they are. So comments on Charles Barkley and John Stockton really jump out and just how sort of the conventional wisdom was broken, dude, which was okay, except for one slight problem in that it was so rushed so we could get to the meat of the story that I felt that it just didn't work. Like, for example, uh, Sonny Vaccaro, we should get to see that he likes to gamble in Vegas while also being diligent at his job. And it gets mentioned once by Ben Affleck uh, in that first meeting. And after that, we kind of never gets touched on again. If anything, it's almost like, you know, if you're a gambler, eventually the big bet's gonna come in, maybe the moral of this movie, inadvertently, just to be clear. But So that's the that's a problem I have with this movie. Thankfully, for the most part, I like it, because aside from that bit at the start, the pacing is really good, and I, pacing's a really important thing for me in cinema. It's like telling the story, it knows it's not a movie that wants to hang about for two and a half hours, three hours. It's gotta be fun, it's gotta be sprightly, and it's gotta hit off those key points. Like, you know, there's meetings with key characters, uh, like, you know, Marlon Wayans is a big role, even though he's only in it for, like, a single scene. It's still a crucial role. Chris Tucker is a crucial role, even though he's really just jumping in and out uh, of the movie. And, you know, the big relationship, it's not so much Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, it's Jason Bateman and, Bateman and Matt Damon. And sort of, it's through those we get the relationships, really, that lead to how he works out, how he needs to have his relationship with Viola Davis in the movie. Like, this is a Matt Damon movie, and this is a key thing to bear in mind. This movie is not about Michael Jordan. That becomes more obvious as you watch the movie, by the way, although I did know going in, and I don't really feel it's a spoiler state. It is very much about the business of Nike and how it became what it is, like, you know, leading up to us seeing the first Jordan shoe and all that. But I think they do a really good job of the storytelling. They establish the stakes really well. Like, this is the thing. They show why and how Nike could even be in a position to be an underdog, which, again, for most people watching this, it's just hard to fathom that. Though I think they do a great job establishing the hows and whys of that and why this was 
so fundamental like it was a do or die deal for Nike in this space but it also establishes where basketball was in terms of its role in the public consciousness at the time sure it was still a popular sport and all that but it was nowhere near in terms of the you know so transcendent impact it has today like you know I'm wearing a Sixers cap I'm wearing a Zaza Pachulia uh, Giorgio Moroder style t-shirt and yes I am wearing Jordans we're going to get to that in a second but there you know the, that the cultural aspect that the transcending beyond just being good at a sport while being very good at a sport, was a thing for basketball. Just hadn't really had the impact it could have. And I think they told that story really well. And it's tight. Like, the movie's one hour, 52 minutes. It doesn't feel like it drags, which is always a sign of good pacing. Like, there is that little rush bit at the, at the start, but I think the performances are great. Like, Ben Affleck veers just close enough to parody a film night without going over that line into being annoying. You do feel like you're watching, you know, a character being portrayed by Matt Damon as opposed to the regular Matt Damon character, which is nice. Uh, in fairness, he has he is able to do that as well, just to be clear. But there are times we get into, it's Matt Damon. And it's not quite at a Tom Hanks level for that. But we, you know, he, the, he, he does run that risk at times. He's not running the risk here, which is great. Bateman, it's a good performance. I feel there are times where he's giant expository role more than a character, but they don't do it as badly as it could be. Viola Davis is just great. Um, that's, I mean, I, I don't have to go into detail there. She's just great as Dolores Jordan. I think using Dolores as that sort of, the, as a central part of the Jordan's family side of the story was a fantastic idea. Uh, obviously it reflects well on the actual history as opposed to what we would have assumed growing up, uh, a lot of us, but it's like brilliantly used, just fantastic. And yeah, I think all the supporting roles are rounded out nicely. Um, with a couple of exceptions, although they're more they they are so supporting that you call them supporting roles is harsh, but they I think figure more into the next section of this video. Wow, Adidas should be so so annoyed. Uh, so essentially, you got three companies that are to having their stories told in this movie in parts, or at least in their relevant in this. The story is obviously Nike. Nike are going to sell an awful lot of shoes off this movie, but maybe not to who you think. But, um, so Nike is shown as being the plucky underdog who knows what needs to be done. Not everybody's in unison, but it gets it right. It gets it on the money. Sonny Vaccaro was the visionary and Phil Knight gives him the backing he needs, but shows that he has the wherewithal and the thinking that he's not just going to blankly write that check. That Sonny Vaccaro has to win him over. And that's exactly how you want your successful corporation to be portrayed. Um, Converse, conversely, are not portrayed quite like that, but they're also not portrayed in any particularly negative light because, of course, in Converse, the brand, is owned by Nike now. So it's, it's, it's showing Converse as not being as forward-thinking as Nike, but also showing that Converse got a lot of things right before and therefore Converse not bad, yo. So not as good as Nike, you're not having that vision. It's like, but it's like not, they're not trying to diminish the Converse brand too much. And then we get to Adidas, where... Wow. Uh, there are, you know, the references to its founder, while not historically inaccurate, are blatant as heck in order to show, hey, you do know who Adidas are, right? And this is not, and like, you know, the way they're doing it, just to be clear, it's that they're, they're saying that, not me, uh, in other words. And they're not, they're saying like they're evil, basically, but also once they've established the evil part, they're also show, but like, you know, but far worse than being evil, because at least evil can be cool, even, well, not that evil in particular, but some evil can be cool, but uh, definitely not that evil, just to be clear, uh, but far worse than being evil, as they suddenly show, they're dorky, they're stilted, they don't get it. Gosh, gosh, I mean, if I'm the Nike executives and I see this first cut, like, I'm sitting in the board and kind of going, are we being a bit harsh on Adidas here? maybe just just a little much just a teensy bit like you know it does look like you know a really really big <laughs> adidas lol you're stupid who would want to be with adidas huh and um, that's interesting to me because obviously if i'm adidas i'm furious but also points to the broader issues nike is sort of facing because in 84 there was uh, definitely with younger people a great popularity with adidas in particularly around basketball which is kind of you know why adidas before the jordan brand line came along was kind of kicking Nike's ass and no kind of about it. 
And we've seen Adidas sort of making inroads again with younger culture being cooler. Like personally, on a pure stylistic level, I am a wild about Adidas, but I'm also not that young person. Uh, but like I, my main issue is I just find they're a little bit too, I suppose, it forced geometry in the design, which is extremely fashion madame it. Uh, but also I just find that they're, they're, they're too safe in their design, I find, far too safe. Like Nike, I like more flamboyant design, and Nike's always been more flamboyant design, uh, more out there and just, you know, bit more room and variety within the Nike portfolio and obviously the Jordan brand helps that but so biases aside yeah all my runners bar my running shoes which I'm going to get to in a second are Nike uh, yes even a man of my size has running shoes um, but yeah so corporately so definitely though with a lot of the audience and a lot of the audience is going to look more like me than like a young person are going to come out thinking I oh, should buy some Jordans or I might buy some Jordans for my kid Cool, grand, and they're coming out definitely thinking Adidas is a bit dorky, yo. They're de like that's definitely like not even if it's, if you like this movie, you're coming out thinking that. Uh, which if I'm Adidas again, I'm furious about. And yeah, but obviously the thing is, will it work with that younger generation? And um, because a lot of young people are going to watch this movie, even though the characters in it and the actors in it are largely past that young generation. But we're talking about shoes, and a lot of sneakerheads are young people, so they're going to watch it just because they're sneakerheads. And I think they'll take that message to a point, but they'll also remember that opening montage a bit more than you or you, you than you or I will, as in even though I mentioned it at the start of this movie, and kind of going, yeah, but they kind of forced that down our throat. So they, I think, I don't think they're going to be as swayed by the whole Adidas are dorks. Uh, and to be honest, it was almost like Germans are dorks, which I got a lot of German friends. Germans are not dorks. Uh, they're just people like you and me, and quite frankly, some of the funniest people I know and have met are German. Uh, so you know that's just ridiculous. Um, not calling the movie xenophobic, I think it's because Adidas were German that they happened to make Germans look like dorks. It was very much an Adidas uh, barb there. So yeah, I think Nike will definitely sell a lot of shoes in the back of this movie, um, no matter what way you look at it, and it's definitely going to resonate in that respect. But I suppose there was a part three here, and let's get to it. So, like I said, this is the latest in what's become a really crowded genre of late. And you think about it, we've had the Theranos series, we've had the Uber series, we always had the Apple movies, both of them, although they're a bit further back in fairness. We uh, are getting the Tetris one. There's just, there's just a lot of these going on right now, like corporate stories in drama. And I'm sure I'm leaving a couple out here as well. And uh, like Inventing Anna kind of fits into that as well, though it's not really a corporate story, it's more of a fraud story, uh, although you could argue that with Theranos as well. But we're definitely seeing far more of these of late. Uh, obviously, the streaming wars are playing a role in that, and Amazon is the funder of this movie, and so expect to see it on Amazon soon. And I just think it's curious that we're just starting to see more and more of these of business stories being told, you know, for their shtick as much as anything else, because we can put them in at a certain point in history, even if it's recent history with most of the ones I mentioned there. But more often than not, they tend to be about things that have gone terribly wrong. I haven't seen the Tetris series yet, um, but. I'm thinking of that, I'm thinking of this, and that's kind of more, it makes it a more interesting story in this respect in terms of the challenge. It's very straightforward to tell a story of darkness, of evil, of malevolence, of failure, of just people being the worst people in many, in, in varying respects. You're trying to tell a story of success here, which is a bit more challenging. And what I, I haven't seen Tetris, but you know, I'm, I'm confident it'll be good things given who's in it and who's involved in it. I kind of liked it, like, it is harder to tell a good story, especially when it's almost 40 years later, it's 39 years later, and we all know that Nike won. Yeah, I don't really know what to say, but I'm just thinking, it's curious to me, as a person who works as a business journalist by day, is obviously, you know, a basketball fan, and I'm a big fan of scripted drama, uh, that um, we're seeing just more of this genre existing, and... I'd love you to tell me in the comments what you think about this sort of explosion in the genre. Is there too much of it? Is it just because we all keep remaking the same style of thing over and over again? Like we had three Pinocchios last year. Um, give me your thoughts on that. That'd be great. And yeah, that's where I'm thinking of that. So here are my final thoughts. So yeah, movie's worth watching for sure. I enjoyed it. Like I said, apart from that one small bit, which I making it, I'm making a hangout sound far bigger than it is. It's a pretty well-made movie. Good performances. Do you need to see in the cinema? Mm, I'm a big fan of going to the cinema, but honestly, this is one where you can totally wait for it to come to streaming, to be honest. 
I think you'll enjoy it. It is fun, and well, definitely if you want, if you like doing the cinema in the afternoons at weekends, which I like doing, I don't always have time to. It's a rarity this time. Certainly is one that fits into that mold very well. I'm always a fan of movies that are well paced. Aside from that one failing, it's very well paced. Solid story, well presented. Doesn't hang around longer than it ought to. It's a good, good job. So yeah, definitely watch it. And of course, please tell me what you think about this in the comments. What shoes you like? Are you more Adidas? Are you more Jordan? Are you Nike? Are you New Balance? Why? Seriously, why? But oh yeah, the shoes. I forgot to mention the shoes. So my one pair of running shoes is actually Asics. And I've been an Asics guy when, when I, back when I ran seriously. I wasn't good at it, but I used to take running very seriously. And I've always stuck with that since. And, you know, that's sort of the impact these things can have. Is that, like, there's nothing Nike can do mentally to make me think that they're going to be my running shoe. Which is kind of hilarious given that in 84, Nike was seen as a running shoe company. Now, for a lot of people, Nike is their running shoe. Great. But, like... When those brands hit and you stick, people tend to stick. So it'll be interesting to see how this makes people stick. I've been rambling for quite a while here, but I hope you enjoyed this. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, it'll be somewhere there, the subscription thing. Um, and yeah, listen, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I will see you next time.